Hey guys, I've got another cool tutorial for you today, and this is about showing you how to make an explosive sort of mine in Unity. So, I've just got my scene that's really basic, so I've got a directional light, first person control, and just a plane with the grass texture on. So, what we want to do first is decide what things we're going to have to make this actually work. So what we'll need, and what I've already got, is my game object, which is a mine here. So I'll place that down. We need this simple particle pack. You can make your own particles, it doesn't really matter. But you can get the simple particle pack from, if you go to Window and then click Asset Store, from your Unity um, game engine itself. And when Unity appears, if you just type in simple at the top, press enter. You can just search by price and there's the simple particle pack so you can just download that and use that. Um, I have also got a couple of sounds for an explosion and a sort of hurt sound as if you were getting hurt by the explosion and then we're going to create a script to actually make it all work so if I get into it straight away here's my mine, I'll drag my mine into my scene as you can see it there and then what I want to do from there is then choose an actual particle effect that I want so if I go into the simple particle pack go to resources and I usually like explosion not one a doesn't matter you can shoot have a look at a load of them um, and if you go and drag that and parent it to your mine so from here what you want to do then is we're gonna want to actually add a collider so you can detect when you're actually close to this particle system so what we want to do is add component physics and then box collider and we'll just set the box collider zero 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 and then we'll make the size one 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 and then you can see it so if we change the z amount make it go up a bit of width just make the collider appropriate also I want to add sound to it so I want to go component audio and audio source this is for later so we don't need to worry about that what we want to do now is make sure the box collider is trigger if we're going to actually make it work with our script so now we're gonna make our script so you want to right click on your project window go to create C sharp and then just call it mine explode and then we're going to open it up in mono develop and start writing a little bit of script so once mono develop opens then we're going to start writing the code so we want really we want three variables and the variables are going to be two public audio clips and one's going to be called hurt with a semicolon and then another public audio clip and that one's going to be called explosion and then a private game object mine which is actually going to be our mine so we can detect where that is in the scene so now if we go to the function start we want to say that particle system dot stop and then semi and then bracket semicolon because it is a component of the particle system so it's almost like a function so all this does is when we actually apply this script we're going to put it on the particle system so it knows that when it's on the particle system it just tells that particle system to stop at the beginning of the game because we don't want it to play it unless we get close to it so what we want to do now is we want to de delete this update function really we don't need that and then what we're going to do is type on trigger enter and then in the box in the um, brackets we need collider other doesn't matter you could use anything other than other and then we're going to write an if statement if then other from our collider is tagged as player because that's what our um, first person controller is going to be tagged then if we could put in two more curly brackets for the if statement then particle system dot play and then two brackets and then your semicolon as I said 
ca calls itself its own function. So that'll make the particle system play once the player enters that collider that we created, which was the box collider. I'll show you what happens from this script now. So if we click on the mine and we just apply that, just leave the audio sources for now. I'll show you what happens when I walk over to the game object. Yep, the particle system explodes when we get near, but nothing else happens. That still stays there. We can do it an infinite amount of times. So unless you wanted something like that, then it's not actually apparent. So we'll go back into our script. And we'll go back into our on trigger enter. And then we're going to make a new line. And we're going to actually add the audio now to make it do something interesting. So play one shot. And then what we want to do in typing our box is type in our variable, which was hurt with a semicolon. And then we'll copy the same line here. You don't have to have these two pieces of audio. Doesn't matter. You can have one explosion. You can have nothing. You can have a different, a different type. And then play one shot explosion, just like we've got in the audio clips above. So we're going to drag those into the inspector later. And what else we want to do is actually, once we've gone into that collider, we don't have that explosion anymore. So what we could write is destroy in brackets particle system which means that on when we enter that trigger it plays the animation then plays the sounds because it just it just uses each line one after each other so then it'll destroy the particle system so if you entered that trigger again it wouldn't do anything it wouldn't play a particle effect and also what we want to do is destroy that mine once it's been there if that's what you want to if that's how you want to you know use it in a game so mine I'm going to write mine equals the game object dot find and then we're going to find what it's actually called so mine is called mine that's what I actually named it well, if we see in if we see in my um, hierarchy here in the game it's called mine and then we're going to create a new line mine dot get component then we're going to create two side brackets and type mesh renderer and then we're going to put in two brackets again dot enabled equals false so I'll explain what this line does so all this does is it finds the game object which I referenced up here the game object it finds it which is called mine which is here and then um, it'll get the component and it, its mesh renderer and will hide its mesh renderer so actually when we go over the explosion it hides that game object so you can't see it anymore so it'll essentially be out of the game once it's running once you've gone over it so if we close mono develop but what I forgot to do was add a semicolon there after the mine so it brought up an error so now when we click on the explosion what we'll do is we'll add two sound effects from here so we'll, I'll go into my sounds folder uh, the explosion where there's explosion the jumps actually what I've got hurt sound but I just named it differently those two things everything's set up if I press play and see my, pa uh, my mine walk over to it <laughs> And that was a bit loud. <laughs> so all you saw there was we walked into the mine with the trigger from our player that's tagged player. And I'll show you here that the first person controller is tagged player. The mine, when we entered that collider, the particle system played. And not before. The sounds played. The particle system stopped so we couldn't do it again. And then the object got hidden. So that's all really. So if you like the tutorial, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.